Hello all my busy bees. My name is Beekeeper Violet and I take care of honey bees at the Mawa Environmental Volunteers Organization. Today we are going to be learning about the most magical, amazing honey bee. So if you know what a honey bee is and why it's so important, I would love for you to give me a little buzz just like a honey bee. So bzzz, and throughout the presentation, I'm going to ask you to buzz to me so I can make sure that we're all understanding what I'm talking about and just be a little silly to be like a honeybee. So if you didn't buzz before and you don't know what a honeybee is, that is awesome because today we're going to learn all about them. And if you know what a honeybee is, I bet that we'll be able to learn something new. So here's a honeybee. Give me a buzz. Bzzz. So if you've seen a honeybee buzzing around, you've seen their cute little wings and their furry little head, then you have seen them hard at work um, helping to make sure our flowers bloom and that our gardens produce veggies that we love to eat. Maybe you saw them at your school, in your school garden. If you have a pool at home, sometimes honeybees are a little bit silly and they're trying to drink from the pool water, but they fall in a little bit because they got a little confused. So right now it's a beautiful sunny day and hopefully it's sunny too when you're watching this and this is the best day for honeybees. Honeybees love to be out when it's sunny. Um, they get a little grumpy when it's rainy or cloudy out just like we do sometimes. They feel a little sad on rainy days, but on beautiful days like this, they're out and about hard at work pollinating and foraging, which we'll talk about. But before we talk more about the honeybees, uh, I also want to talk about some other types of bees who love sunny days and that we get a little bit confused with. So let me show you some photos. So we all know what our honeybee looks like now that we've seen it. And later on, we're going to look at some real honeybees. I'm really excited to show you that. But can anyone tell me what this bee is? They're a little bit bigger, a little bit chubbier. They have yellow fur. You hear them buzz, buzzing around a lot. Does anyone know what this bee is? Shout out if you know. If you said bumblebee, then you are absolutely right. Bumblebees are different than honeybees, um, but they do pollinate just like them. Bumblebees live underground, so they like to live in the forest, um, in shadier areas, and honeybees, normally in our area, they'll live in beehives, like the one right behind me. We're going to look at that a little closer later. Or they live way high up in trees or on the side of a cliff where they can get lots and lots and lots of sun. So here's a bumblebee. We all know what bumblebees look like now and I bet you've all seen them around your gardens or at school pollinating flowers. What about this insect? Does anyone know who this is? Some of you may have said a yellow jacket. So this is a yellow jacket. I know that sometimes they can be a little bit scary. Sometimes they get trapped in our classrooms at school if we leave the windows open on a sunny day. Or maybe if you're eating a really sweet, juicy piece of fruit in the summer, they're gonna try and share it with you because they like super sweet things. Um, and sometimes you might have gotten stung by them and I know it hurts, um, but yellow jackets are different than honeybees and bumblebees they tend to get a little bit more upset and angry when you're in their space um, and they may try to sting you whereas bumblebees and honeybees aren't as interested in going out of their way to sting you they're a little bit more interested in finding beautiful flowers and flowers from veggies to pollinate um, and enjoying the sunshine so here's a yellow jacket Does anyone know what this insect is? Take a close look. Did anyone say wasp? Because this is a wasp and I know that I'm a little bit scared of wasps. 
There's still amazing insects. They're here on this earth for a reason, but wasps out of honeybees and bumblebees like to sting a little bit more. They get a little bit more upset when they're in your area, when you're in their area, if you're, you're around where they live. Um, they look a little bit bigger than honeybees. They have a really long body and they have really long wings and they aren't furry. So instead of fur, they just look shiny. So that's how you know that it's a wasp and not a yellow jacket and not a honeybee and not a bumblebee. All right, so here's another yellow jacket. Just to get familiar, you guys are going to be insect experts at the end of this. And one more, I believe this is a wasp. Okay, so one more time. I'm going to show you a picture of three different insects. Some will be bees, some will be other kinds of insects I showed you, and I want you to tell me which is which. Okay, do you know who this is? That's right, it's a worker bee. What about this photo, can you see it? That's right, that's a bumblebee and the bumblebee is on, do you know what kind of flower this is? You might see it on your lawns. It's a dandelion. It's a dandelion. Bumblebees and honeybees love dandelions. It provi provides a ton of food for them. Okay. What about this one? A wasp. So remember, a little bit more angry sometimes doesn't like you to be in their space. So it's best for you to stay out of their way. And finally, what about... This one. It's another wasp. I put in two. And again, back to our first photo. A honeybee. So now I think that you guys are going to be experts. You're going to be able to tell everyone when you see an insect, if it's a bumblebee, if it's a wasp, if it's um, a yellow jacket. So. Next, we are going to talk about a few different kinds of bees because in a honeybee hive, we have three different types of bees. So I bet you can guess one. If you said worker bee, then you're right. So in every hive, oh, this is actually the wrong picture. This is a queen bee. So we're gonna talk about that later. But let me show you a picture of a worker bee so we can remember together again what it looks like. So in every hive, we have worker bees. We have another type of bee, and I bet you know what it is. There's only one type of bee per hive that is this kind of bee. Did someone say queen bee? Give me a buzz if you knew that I was talking about a queen bee. Bzzz. So if you said queen bee, you're right. So we have worker bees, we have our queen bees, and finally, there's one type of bee that I bet no one knows. And if you know, we have to give that person a buzz for getting the right answer. There are drone bees. So we have drones in every hive as well. So I bet one person or two people knew the answer. So give me a buzz, let's buzz for that person. Bzzz, for knowing the answer, that's amazing. But now all of you guys know, and it's going to be really cool because you're going to be able to tell everybody about what is going on in a beehive and who lives in it. So. First, I wanna talk about the amazing worker bee. Can anyone guess how many worker bees live in every beehive? How many? Someone may say 100, someone may say 1,000, some may say 10,000. I'm going to say anywhere from 40 to 60,000 bees can live in any one of my beehives right now at the peak of summer. So that means right now in summer, that's when my beehives are the most healthy. There's tons of flowers and nectar and pollen for them to eat um, and they can build up their populations. 
So there's so many bees in every hive. It's amazing, these tiny little creatures. And they're all living together in my hives, in my apiary. My apiary is where all my bees live. So in every one of my hives, there's tens of thousands of worker bees. Now, what do you think worker bees do? What are they doing all day? I know they buzz about a lot. They make a lot of noise. You may see them on your lawns, hanging out on little clover flowers, like this one, or dandelions, like I showed you in the photo before. But they're doing a lot more than that. So worker bees, they're all girls. All the worker bees in the hive are girls, so most of the hives are made up of female bees, and they take care of almost all the day-to-day -day tasks in the hive. So we have nurse bees, we have guard bees, there are house bees, and there are forager bees, and there's many different roles, but they're responsible for taking care of a lot of the chores in the hive, just like you may have to walk your dog, or do the dishes, or make your bed, worker bees are kind of doing the same thing. So, what do you think that the nurse bees do? You may have thought about all the baby bees are in the hive. So if I told you that there are thousands of bees in a hive, someone's gotta take care of those baby bees, right? And the queen is the one who, are, who is laying all the little eggs for the baby bees, and she's laying them in these combs that the bees build out of wax on frames, which I'm going to show you. And in those, she lays little eggs. And when those eggs turn into larvae and then pupa, and then finally baby bees, they need someone to help take care of them, to help feed them, to show them around the hive, to get them acquainted to their new space. And so nurse bees are responsible for making sure that a baby bee grows up healthy and strong from egg until it finally hatches. Worker bees also are responsible for protecting the hive. So there are a lot of creatures who want to try to get into a honeybee hive. If you have ever watched Winnie the Pooh, which I bet you have, Winnie the Pooh's a little bear, and he loves honey so much, just like I bet some of you do. If you love honey, give me a buzz. Bzzz. So, there are bears who live in New Jersey who love honey, and they're gonna try to get into the hive. And when a beehive senses that, uh-oh, danger, someone's trying to get into my house, the guard bees will come out and try to sting that animal or that bear who's trying to get in so they can protect their hive and protect their honey because their honey is their food that they eat during the winter. It's like the cupboards or the pantry in your house. That's where they store all of their food within the hive um, is in honey, the form of honey. So guard bees also will protect about other animals. So raccoons like to get into the hive. Sometimes mice like to form little nests in the hive because honey bees keep the hive warm and toasty, especially during the winter. And sometimes there are people who try to get into the hive who the honey bees don't like. So sometimes when I'm taking care of the bees, I need to open up their hive and they think that maybe I'm an intruder um, and the guard bees will come out and try to sting me. But luckily, I wear my super colorful bee suit and I put this hood over my head and it has nice, long, colorful arms, and that protects me from any bees who may be a little upset, any guard bees that I'm coming into their hive, um, and they won't sting me. So, worker bees, they're also responsible for going outside the hive, the oldest bees, bees who are at the end of their life, maybe five or six weeks old, they're the foragers, so they're going to go out, um, and they're going to fly anywhere from two to 10 miles, that's a long time for a little bee to fly outside their home and they're going to find nectar and pollen. And nectar and pollen are what the bees need to live. It's their food. It's like they go out of the hive to go grocery shopping, except grocery shopping for them is with flowers and with trees that flower and veggies that flower and they're getting nectar. Nectar is their energy source. It's like if you drank a soda or a really sweet piece of fruit, um, you would have a lot of energy to be ready to go. You'd be ready to play and ready to swim all day. So nectar provides sugar 
and minerals, like what are in your vitamins. And those help to keep the bees really energized and healthy and full of life. And then bees also go out, and I'm going to show you a picture. Worker bees also go out and they get pollen. They get pollen from plants. So pollen is this little, if you can see this little yellow glob on the bee's leg in what we call their pollen pockets. And pollen from flowers provide bees with um, protein. It provides them with protein which makes them healthy and strong and builds their little bee body. So when you're eating dinner or you go to school, your parents may say, make sure that you eat your sandwich or make sure you drink that glass of milk because it has a lot of protein in it. Um, and that's the same thing for bees. If this is like their milk or their sandwich from lunch, it keeps them really strong and healthy. And when worker bees and foragers who are going outside the hive are going from flower to flower, sometimes some of the pollen on their pollen pockets will fall onto the next flower and that's called pollination. And if you haven't learned about pollination, pollination is super important because it makes sure that all of our other flowers can grow. Um, by pollinating the flowers, by the bees helping to pollinate our flowers, it allows those flowers to keep on growing and stay healthy and grow again the next season. And that's what gives us our fruits and our veggies and all the yummy, delicious, fresh produce we like to get from the supermarket. Bees probably helped make them grow by pollinating the flowers of those plants. So worker bees are extremely important creatures. Okay, so next we're going to learn about our busy friends, the drones. So let's talk about drones. How would you know if you saw a drone? You would know because drones have really big curious eyes. They have a bigger, longer body and they have a rounder bottom. So that's different from a worker bee. A worker bee has smaller eyes, a pointier bottom, and a shorter body. And what's interesting is drones, they're all males, and drones don't sting. So if I saw a drone walking around the ground right now in the grass where I am, I could just pick him up and he would be really happy and just let me hold him and he would walk around. Drones are also a little bit chattier. They seem to have a lot to say. Bzz, you always hear them buzzing and talking. Um, beekeepers don't really know what drones do. Some people think that drones are there to communicate with other hives, other beehives, to connect and tell them how their beehive is doing, to ask them where the really good food or the really good forage is to make sure all the other hives are healthy. So I would say drones are like the mailmen of the hive. They're going out and communicating messages. Drones do not sting. Like I said, they have no stinger. Honeybees do have a stinger, worker bees. Worker honeybees have a stinger and if they sting you, they die. And so drones are lucky. Um, they don't really have to worry about protecting the hive. They're just there to be the mailmen. And so they don't really need a stinger. I would say the drones are a little bit lazy. Um, they're not foraging, they're not really guarding the hive. Um, and so beehives only produce about a, hundred, a few hundred drones per every hive. But they are important because we need them to mate with the queen in order for the queen to lay eggs. So they do play a really important part of the hive. I think it's really important to have a mailman of the hive. Um, and they also help us to create new bees for our hive. So the final type of bee I want to talk about is the queen bee. So let's take a look at the queen bee. The queen bee is the largest bee of the hive. There's only one queen bee per hive, just like there's only one queen per kingdom, maybe in some of the movies or books you've read. And the queen bee has a really long body. She has a pointy bottom, just like the worker bee and she's just a beautiful creature. So as a beekeeper, when I see a queen bee, I always am like, oh, cause she's so beautiful and really special. If you don't have a queen bee, you can't have any hive. The hive will die without this queen bee. Queen bees become queen bees because nurse bees in the hive will feed them a special food called royal jelly. 
and only the queen bee gets fed royal jelly for her whole life and that determines who a queen bee is. So from birth, she is chosen by the hive from an egg to be the most special bee in the hive. And I want you to take a guess. How many years do you think a queen bee can live? Did someone say one year? Give me a buzz. Did someone say two years? Three? Four? How about five? So, some queen bees have been found to live up to five years. That's a really long time for an insect. It's amazing. And that tells you how important they are. Queen bees can lay up to their weight, their body weight in eggs every single day. And they're typically going to be laying their eggs once it starts to get warm out in the spring, all the way through summer, and they'll start slowing down for the fall when the hives want a smaller population to feed when it gets colder in the winter and there's not a lot of food for them to get. So now that we learned about the worker bee, the drone, and the queen bee, I want to talk about where the bees live. So we're going to come over here and we're going to take a look at my beehive. So bees live in beehives and let's see if we can get a better look here. And I have about 10 beehives. There are no bees in here. Um, they don't really like to be moved from their home, but I have an observation hive where there's tons of little drones and workers scurrying around we're going to look at. So, in every hive, bees leave, live in these big boxes called deeps. So in these big boxes, I like to call these like the living room or the kitchen of the hive. That's where all the bees are eating. That's where their bee, baby bees are being born. That's where the queen lives. That's where they lay eggs. And then in our smaller boxes, right here, one and two, these are called the supers. And that's like the attic or maybe even the pantry of your house. So that's where the bees are storing all their honey that they want for the winter and some of the honey that I'm going to take um, to eat later on to give out to my community members. And then just to make sure the bees don't get rained on um, or they don't get any other unwanted animals coming into their hive, we put an inner, an inner cover right here. And we put an outer cover on the hive. So when I want to go into a beehive, I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use to make sure that the bees don't get too scared and I don't get stung and it keeps everyone happy. So the first thing I do when I go into a beehive is sometimes I put my suit on, sometimes I don't. Some people think bees are really scary um, and they're, they're stinging everyone all the time, but that's not true. As long as you go into a beehive and you're calm and you feel happy, you feel happiness in your heart, um, beehive, bees won't sting you and you'll be super happy. But sometimes just in case, I'll put my bee suit on um, and I won't put my hood up. So if bees get a little bit upset with me, I can just pop my hood on right away and I'll be all good to go. So a really important tool for me when I go into my beehive is my hive tool. And I use that to crack open the hive and in between my supers and deeps, because sometimes bees will seal up these boxes with what's called propolis and it's like bee glue. It's like the glue you'd use for crafts, but the bees get this glue from the sap on trees. So I have my hive tool and then I have my, I have my smoker. So give me a buzz if you know what a smoker does for a beehive. And it's okay if you don't know. I didn't know until I started learning. So I use a smoker and it's just smoke. I put wood chips in here and I start a little tiny fire. It smells like a bonfire, like a campfire. It smells really good. And it's nice cool smoke so I can puff it on my arm. It doesn't hurt. And what I'll do is when I go into my beehive, I will do a little puff in this little crack here. So my beehive sitting on a bottom board, I'll puff it here. Just let the bees know, hello, I'm coming into your hive. 
and what the smoke does is it makes them a little bit confused and a little bit sleepy so instead of getting upset that I'm gumming into their hive and the guard bees um, are alerted to come out and maybe sting me they just get a little bit drowsy they think that their hive maybe is on fire so they'll turn into their little bee cells and they'll try to start eating their honey and gathering all their pollen in case they need to leave just like if your house was on fire you would get maybe a few things that are very important to you and then you'd head out of dodge you'd leave your house so the bees get ready to do that when they feel that smoke but by smoking them, I get about 15 minutes of time that allows me to get into the hive. Okay, so I've smoked the bottom here like you've seen. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to very gently open up my inner cover. I'm going to make sure to do it slowly so that the bees don't think that an angry animal is coming into the hive. And then I'm going to give a little bit more smoke, a little puff puff. And I'm going to do the same thing again for my inner cover. And then I'm in to my hive. I'm into my first super. And there's going to be lots of bees here if there was bees in this hive. So I'm going to give them a little smoke. And I'm going to show you what a bee frame looks like without any bees on it. So another good use of this hive tool is that it allows me to get into the hive. These sometimes the frames are a little bit sticky, the bee frames. And the hive tool allows me to unstick those frames so I can get them out and show them to you. This bee super was a little bit sticky, so it's really great that I have my hive tool with me. Okay. So here is a bee frame. And if you look really closely, you can see all those beautiful bee combs that our honeybees have made. They didn't finish this part yet, but that's okay. They're really good builders, so I know when I put this back into a hive of bees, they're going to fill it up right away with wax that comes off of their tummies. So they have a little gland on their tummies, and they go around, and that's how they make these beautiful combs. So this is all done by honeybees. They're really great builders. So in every super, I have 10 of those. And in these super frames, that's where the bees store the honey. They'll store the honey right in here. Okay. Now I want to show you guys some bees and I'm going to see if we can find some drones and if we can find um, some worker bees. So here's a honeybee hive or a, excuse me, my observation hive and I have three super frames in here. So like just like the frames I just showed you and oh. Do you guys see that bee right there? Do you know what it is? If you said drone, I'm gonna give you a, bzzz, a buzz because that's right. So there's a really big drone in here. Can anyone point out to me a worker bee? I can, so here's a worker bee right here. They're all up and down here. There's tons of them. And does anyone know what's in these combs right now? If you said honey, then you are right. So right now I pulled a few frames that have a lot of honey in it. And bees are super special because they produce honey for us. And honey is an amazing food that is really good for our bodies when we're sick. It can help us with allergies when all the pollen comes out in the spring. If anyone gets a little bit sneezy like I do and some people use honey on their cuts if a doctor tells them to because it can help heal their wounds bees not only produce honey they also make wax so all the combs i showed you like this one before is made of beeswax and beeswax is a really amazing uh, substance sometimes it might be in your chapstick or in your lip gloss Sometimes it might be in the candles your mom and dad have at home. And sometimes it may be on what you know of wax paper that your mom or dad packs your lunch in. So right here, I have a bunch of wax that I melted down from old bee frames I didn't need anymore. And I'm gonna make candles out of them or maybe lip balm. 
Okay, my busy bees, before we leave, I wanna do some quick bee trivia to make sure that we learned a lot today. So first, I want you to tell me what this is. If you said a honeybee, you're right. Do you know what the orange glob is on the bee's leg? Mm-hmm. That's right, it's pollen. So remember, bees like to get pollen and they like to bring it back to their hive for protein, but they also sometimes bring pollen to other flowers to make sure that they grow healthy and strong. Who's this? And we just saw one. It's a drone, that's right. And is this a honeybee? No, it is not a honeybee. I believe this guy is a yellow jacket. So it gets a little bit more upset if we're in their space um, and we don't get honey from them. And finally, who's this? It's our friend the bumblebee. We love bumblebees um, and we also love yellow jackets but there's different behaviors that we have to show around different types of bees to make sure that we stay safe. So all my busy bees, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot. And one day I hope you can come to my farm and see my bees in person. But for now, I hope you have a wonderful bee filled summer. And if you can give me one final bzzz, we'll say goodbye. So on the count of three, let's all buzz. One, two, three. Bzzz. Okay, everyone, bye, and thanks for watching.